Hello and welcome to a very important Oroville Dam update for February 2024. The water level at California's second largest reservoir is currently 841 feet, 6 inches above mean sea level. Thanks to an ongoing series of atmospheric rivers, the water elevation has increased over 23 feet so far this year. The current elevation is 200 feet above minimum power pool and 58 feet below full pool. In last week's episode, I spoke about how concerning it is that dam managers have not started flood control operations at California's largest reservoir, Lake Shasta. But Shasta Dam is managed by the Bureau of Reclamation. Oroville, on the other hand, is managed by the California Department of Water Resources. How are they handling the large volumes of inflows from the recent rainstorms? You're about to find out. Hit that like button. Tell me off in the comments section. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. I think it's important to take a moment and define atmospheric rivers. I talk about them all the time, but what exactly are they? Well, an atmospheric river is a narrow corridor in the atmosphere that transports concentrated moisture. It's similar to a river in the sky, except this river is carrying water vapor instead of liquid water. When these rivers make landfall, they cause extreme precipitation events, specifically along the coastal regions of Washington, Oregon, and California. When these atmospheric rivers originate near Hawaii, they are often referred to as a pineapple express. Now let's get to the stats. This is a chart of Lake Oroville's water level for the 2024 water year that began on October 1st, 2023. At the start of the water year, Lake Oroville's water elevation was 833 feet. That declined to a low point of 811 and a half feet on December 17th. Today, the water level has risen to 842 feet. That's an increase of over 31 feet in just six weeks' time. Although this chart does a good job of showing the dramatic rise in water levels, I want to talk about the capacity percentages. When the 2024 water year began, the Oroville Reservoir was just under 74% of full pool capacity. Oroville declined to a low point of 66.4% in mid-December. That is when the dramatic rise in water levels kicked in, and today the reservoir is at 77% of full pool capacity. Those capacity percentage numbers are important, as flood control for this time of year is typically initiated when the reservoirs in Northern California reach the 75% of full pool mark. In last week's episode, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video, in that episode, I spoke about my concern that even though Lake Shasta was over 78% of capacity, they had still not initiated flood control by releasing water from the Shasta Dam. But like I said earlier, the oversight of Shasta Dam is in the hands of the Bureau of Reclamation, a federal entity. Lake Oroville and Oroville Dam, on the other hand, is under the jurisdiction of a state-level body, the California Department of Water Resources, or DWR. The area manager for the Bureau of Reclamation recently stated that he is being conservative with water levels in Shasta and does not plan to release water through the spillway this year. The state of California seems to be taking a different and, in my opinion, safer approach by releasing water from Oroville Dam as the water level increased over that 75% of capacity mark. And it's not just a water level that triggers flood control. There are several other factors involved, such as the time of year and the weather forecast. If it's late winter and major rain events are predicted, it's usually best to release water in a very controlled manner from the reservoirs to make room for the increased inflows. When they fail to do this, when they fail to release water when big rain events are on the horizon, bad things happen. This was the case seven years ago when Oroville Dam managers failed to release enough water as major storms were on the horizon. They waited until Lake Oroville reached 82% of capacity before implementing flood control. That turned out to be too late. The massive influx of water damaged Oroville's main spillway, and as a result, the lake level rose until it began to flow over the emergency spillway. 
The emergency spillway had not been used since the dam's construction, and it was not designed to handle such a high volume of water. This caused severe erosion, which threatened to undermine and collapse the entire spillway structure. The situation prompted evacuations of over 180,000 people due to the risk of catastrophic flooding. Now let's talk about more recent events. On Wednesday, January 30th, the Department of Water Resources announced they would increase outflows from Oroville Dam from around 1 to 2,000 cubic feet per second to 6,000 cubic feet per second. These releases pro provide flood control protection for downstream communities and are coordinated closely with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and other water operators. This is a chart of inflows to Lake Oroville for the 2024 water year. This spike on December 19th was due to a series of thunderstorms that jump-started this winter's dramatic rise in water levels. Then, on January 13th, inflows spiked to above 5,000 cubic feet per second and has more or less remained above that level since then. It's this prolonged period of inflows that caused water levels to increase to the point where flood control is absolutely needed. Now here is a chart of outflows from Oroville Dam for the 2024 water year. As you can see, outflows from Oroville spike from time to time due to several factors, such as increased hydropower demands, supporting fish habitats in the Feather River, or water supply demands from the State Water Project. These spikes in outflow typically only last for a few hours or maybe a day or two, depending on the situation. The increased outflows we're experiencing today will last longer. It may be just for a few more days, depending on the amount of precipitation we receive, but increased outflows could last much longer. Obviously, Lake Oroville is very full for this time of year, so full that dam managers have recently increased releases for flood control purposes. But we do need to make sure that we have enough water in the reservoir to carry us through the dry summer and fall months. If we encounter another few years of drought, that water may need to last a lot longer. This is why I monitor the snowpack for the Upper Sierra and Trinity region. It's the snowpack in this region that will melt when temperatures increase and hopefully refill Lake Oroville. In fact, on average, the Sierra snowpack supplies about 30% of California's entire water needs. Despite receiving a lot of precipitation so far this year, most of that has been in the form of rain, not snow. The Pineapple Express I mentioned earlier consists of very warm moisture from Hawaii. When it makes landfall, it does so as rain, not snow. Not only does that warm rain not add to the snowpack, it can actually reduce the snowpack. The snowpack for the Upper Sierra Trinity region is currently only 42% of the April 1st average. That's just 67% of normal for this time of year. The central and southern regions are doing even worse. The central region is at 36% of normal, and the southern region is only at 28% of normal for this time of year. So dam managers have a lot on their hands at the moment. The priority is obviously flood control. They need to carefully release water from the reservoirs to make room for increased inflows from the atmospheric rivers. They also need to make sure they retain enough water for later this year because the snowpack is so low. It's a fine balance. Well, that's all I have for this episode, but we will continue the conversation in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.